Welcome to the Ace Pilot Academy. Today, we'll be learning the basics of lift. Lift is vital to flight. Trust me, I know, I'm a flightless bird. I need lift to allow me to fly, just like humans need lift in their aircrafts to allow them to fly. For an aircraft to take us to the skies, it must overcome the force of gravity. To do that, it must generate a force called lift, which is produced by an airplane's wings. When the force generated by that lift is greater than the force of gravity, the aircraft can fly. To understand how lift works, we need to know about two scientific principles, Newton's third law of motion and Bernoulli's principle of differential pressure. Let's talk about Newton's third law first. Newton's third law states that, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. It's straightforward to visualize this law as it relates to an airplane. The action of an airplane's propeller pushes air rearward. The opposite reaction from Newton's third law means that this will push the airplane in the opposite direction, or forward. The concept is the same for a jet engine, which pushes hot gas backward, thus pushing the airplane forward. In addition, because part of the air passing under the wing deflects downward, the opposite reaction of the downward moving air means pushing the wing upward, producing a small amount of lift. When the airplane moves forward through the air, air passes over the wing. And that's where Bernoulli's principle of differential pressure comes in. Bernoulli's principle of differential pressure explains that because the wing is in the shape of an airfoil, meaning its upper surface is curved, creating a longer surface. Air that flows over the top must travel faster than air that travels along the bottom because the bottom is relatively flat, yielding a relatively shorter surface. This change in air velocity between the upper and lower wing surfaces results in a change in pressure. Air traveling faster along the top creates lower pressure on top of the wing compared to the relatively higher pressure created by the slower moving air along the bottom. Since the pressure is lower above the wing, the higher pressure under the wing can lift the airplane into the air. If we were to dig a little deeper into the production of lift, we would find that lift is determined through the interplay of air density, airfoil velocity, surface area of the wing, and the coefficient of lift for a given airfoil. But for pilots, particularly those of us who aren't engineers, we can boil it down simply. For most airfoils, lift produced is a function of the airspeed of the air over the wing, called the relative wind, and the angle the wing makes with that air, called the angle of attack, or AOA. If the AOA stays constant, a doubling of airspeed will quadruple the lift produced by the airfoil. However, with an increase in AOA, the wing produces more lift, but also more induced drag, thus requiring more power to maintain a constant airspeed. A third, seldom discussed aspect of lift involves air which escapes from the high pressure area under the wing around the tip of the wing to the lower pressure area above the wing. This circular flow, called a wingtip vortex, creates a downwash which reduces lift. We may see fancy wingtip devices designed to help minimize this vortex phenomenon, including something as minimal as a slightly curved wingtip to something as dramatic as the six-foot winglets on many airliners. See our video on wingtip vortices for more information on this phenomenon in particular to lift. Let us review. Air flowing under a wing bounces off the positively inclined airfoil and deflects down Newton's third law, pushing the airplane aloft. In addition, the shape of most airfoils creates faster moving air above the airfoil and slower moving air below the airfoil, creating a difference in pressure which creates a small portion of lift, Bernoulli's principle. However, some of this higher pressure air escapes around the wingtip to the lower pressure area above the wing, creating wingtip vortices which impede lift. The amount of lift created by an airfoil is primarily affected by the speed of the air over the wing in the difference between the relative wind in the angle of the wing to that wind, angle of attack. These characteristics of lift allow those of us without functioning wings to take to the skies in amazing machines. Thanks for joining us at the Ace Pilot Academy. See you next time.